Hello and welcome to the Every Other Saturday podcast for a brand new episode this week where Rangers have uh, managed to get three points on the board again in the league, which is good, but the performances are uh, are not there yet. They're not what we want to be watching. There's, uh, there's a lot to, to improve on. Come on, is put out there. He said this is going to be the best football we'll play. It will take us time. We're now in that stage where he said we would be playing better. We would be the team that he wants us to be, and I'm not really seeing that um, at all yet. There's been a couple of good performances throughout, Malmo away, Ross County at home. There's obviously been resilient performances against Hibs and Dundee United in this um, period of fixtures after the last international break, but there's, this Rangers team is so poor. It's just it's depressing to, to watch us, and aye, the same movie keeps kind of playing out. But aye, firstly, we'll talk about the the Leon game, which kind of brung these feelings back again. Hibs last week was was just again another dire performance where we're at home, we're one 0 to the good, and we can't capitalise or or put any teams uh, to bed, missing chances, letting teams back into the game, making it really hard for ourselves, as is apparently the Rangers' way. But I think there was a a large deal of optimism coming coming into this Leon game where right we're at home. European nights, we tend to get the best out of any player that, that plays in the Rangers jersey that night. And um, aye, we we started the game relatively well. I think the team selection was as good as you could get uh, at the moment with Rangers with the injuries and stuff. But started the game really well, had a couple of really, really good chances. Obviously, the one for Cherny is and should be 1-0. Um, and there's a, there's a couple other ones um, for the way we started the game really positively. But then, aye, it's just... Turns into amateur out at the back and um one nil down after some some really good work. We then uh, obviously equalised through through good work. Serial Dessers for me. I mean, how is he not alive to any situation that happens inside the box? Obviously, we get lucky and uh, Tom Lawrence scores, but then after that it was kind of just one way traffic. We took the foot off the gas. Um, didn't capitalise on on the home crowd and being one each. Um, very inexperienced back pass for Connor Barron, led it to two one. It was I. It was kind of the only the one way uh, after that. It was mate, and uh, as I said said last week as well. This is where we'll get tested defensive wise. Um, the uh, the first two goals for me. I mean, come on. Um, uh, but I honestly I, I did fancy our chances a bit. Maybe that's just me. And uh, we've been in Europe um, on Thursday nights, but uh, I don't fancy my chances anymore really with this team. Not at all. Um, Barron, as you say, the back pass, just an experience at this level as well. I do feel that we maybe should be looking to bring somebody in with a bit, <clears throat> bit more experience. Can't, can't just all rely on, on Barron to do the work in the middle of the park for me. Um, proper That's one of the biggest screen. things, I Proper the man on the screen, I'm not convinced at all. No, I think that was a panic buy, personally, for me. More and more I see him. I just don't rate him. Um... But aye, mate, just you knew you knew where it was going as soon as the first two went in for them. Um quality players out wide um for them. What was uh, number eighteen for them on the screen, forgot his name. He was he was a really good player. Um and then obviously the boy that was having a field day with Tav all night, he done pretty well. Um but aye, yet again another game where Rangers defend poorly and uh, can they take our chances. Nah, if you, I mean in Europe at this level, if you can't score an open goal in the first two minutes, it's- then nah, you don't deserve to win any game. Um, that was that was unforgivable. But I think I uh, the setup and and the way that we played against Leon was just completely amateur. Um, all around the park. If you look at the the team, there isn't a great deal of quality in that team. And I think one of the the glaring things is when we play a team like Leon, like Celtic, a team that's going to commit us, a team that's going to want to play football against us in the middle of the park. We are exposed every time and. Mm-hmm. That's been for the start of the season, and that is still not being addressed. Um, I, I mean, just looking at that team, mate. That to me, that's the team that's good enough to play the game last night or whatever. You not to start a Europa League game, not to start a European game. You look at like, Lawrence really was still relying on Lawrence to to get us the goals. That's a, that's such fair a play, big fair play problem. To Lawrence, fair play to Lawrence, he's getting the goals and that. But then you see when he goes down injured, and you sort of think to yourself, right? Well, the manager's not going to do what anybody. Would really do, which is move the boy who's out wide into the into the middle. Maybe bring it, do something different creatively. Manager's no got it in the locker. Fuck it, Kieran Dow, let's go. Nah, I think, 
Aye, the, the, the manager's decision making is probably an all time low at the moment. Um, you go in obviously three one down eventually. Lacazette with a, a fantastic strike just before um, before half time, but you need to react after that. You're at home, you're three one down in Europe, but there's all the the hope in the world that we can get back into the game with just one goal. What does what does he do? <laughs> obviously, Tom Lawrence, I think yeah, uh, got a minor a minor knock. Um, so he had to come off. What what would be the logical thing to do here? Put Bayrami into the centre, bring a, a McCausland or um, Egamani or somebody. Just we a bit. Just take a risk. It's three. You're exactly. three one down at home. Take a risk. You're three one down at home. I I just didn't like he's hanging me afterwards as well in the press or talking about all his chances and all this kind of stuff. Preferably, you know you're going to be you know you're going to be on the back foot. So why not set us up to be Solid at the back, be hard to beat, and then get them on the counter. But that's that is the problem. We're far too easy to play against. Like but I said, it mate, we're, we're too old. There's too much space in this team, especially in the middle. It's too easy to play through. One pass and you're through. And the, as I say, the defense is it's like a knife going through butter. And you nah. feel it for, for Butland. Butland couldn't dent about any of the goals for me. Um, obviously, as you say, third one sensational, but just a lack of. The lack of ideas for the manager that he doesn't feel like he could maybe shift it up and bring certain players on. Um, I mean, the best thing he done obviously probably was was sub tav. I didn't I didn't expect that. That showed a bit of something, but <laughs> aye. Um, and then we thought it would show something, but then uh, Tavernier just yeah. plays and last <laughs> night as well. So I think Clement for me isn't making enough proactive decisions in this team to get us to be better. He could have I mate. Like Kieran Dow coming on at half time, like you may as well just leave and go to the pub <laughs> at that point. Uh, that is probably the worst sub that you could make, and especially in Europe against Leon. He just ran about doing nothing. That is Kieran Dow in a nutshell. He just does nothing. He's like the most like bland player that we have on our books now. Um, and he's been the guy that's been tasked to come on with a change. And to be fair to Clement, he's not got a massive deal of options to pick for. There's not like one glaring guy you're looking at being like, oh, we need him to come on and change a game. But Kieran Dow is definitely not at the top of your list to, <laughs> to come on um, even at that point. So just a disaster night uh, for the manager, for the, the performance of the team. I thought they lacked fight. I thought they lacked hunger to get back into the game, especially again at home. Aye, we get we had a good performance against Malmo. Obviously, that was a good result at the time. I I just don't think we've got any quality to compete at this level this season. I think our purple patch in Europe over the past what five six years is now gone. I think we are now in an era where we just kind of need to show up and try and do our best. I don't think we we're a given to beat anybody in Europe anymore. To be honest with you, and um, I I couldn't even really pick your standout in this team. Um, the other night in, uh, against Leon, we were but just a, ripped apart defensively and couldn't do anything going forward. But that's the thing for me, but usually when we take teams on in, in Europe, it's the whole team that plays together. We play well as a team. You know what I mean? There's no, as you say, fight, energy, desire to play for the team. Like there was not just the basics of the game, there was nothing. <clears throat> as soon as we as soon as the goals went in, you could tell the heads were down. Um I don't know, as I say, for me personally, you can there's only so much you can say the managers excuse wise. I mean, he knew his statement he'd realistically here now. Um, as I say, Kieran Dow's your only option. That's just I, I just I just I'm losing faith in him being the but guy who can turn this around. I think we I think we all are. Um because I, it doesn't make it easy when he's in the press on the stuff he's saying and then just making himself a meme. But the what was he doing the other week we was it with the penalty incident with Suter mm-hmm. stand about doing the whole like he, he's not making it easy for himself and that's when you can tell I think the manager's feeling the pressure a bit I watched the pre-match interview obviously before the game last night and I don't know I was just looking at him and I thought you're feeling it you can you can sense it because as soon as the fans start turning man you know you're it's gone um, and these players as well you think Butland after this game what he said in the interview as well so uh, it's, I don't know, it's interesting at the moment to learn it, what's, what's going to happen, but uh, I, I don't know, mate. It's just you, you have no, no real thing yeah. you say. You can't keep going in this cycle, getting to this point, as you say all the time, you get to your birthday kind of thing, and the manager's gone, and we're looking for a new manager. We can't, we can't keep doing this, but at the end of the day, Rangers isn't a project kind of club, it's result business. It's like that for, that is the thing, like, you, you bring in a coach at, 
for instance, in Aberdeen that are doing really well at the moment, they're flying, they're winning every game that's put up against them. But if they had to go a different route and they obviously signed a lot of these Scandinavian players, signed a lot of these kind of project players, have got a manager in who's untested in this this league. If they had a season where they maybe struggled for a bit, they obviously got a bit of stability. Then the next season after that went and went kind of made a push for the, the top of the league, then you'd be like, right, that's what a, a club like Aberdeen are going to do. But success isn't a thing that is, oh, maybe we'll get it next season at Rangers. It's like we have to win now. And I feel like Clermont is just going round in circles with us. Oh, we won't see the best team until... Like, look at Aberdeen, for example. This manager's came in at the start of the season and he's got them playing a brand of football that's attractive. They've got players that can do their jobs. They know their roles. The fans are on side with them because they're playing exciting football and they're winning games. And that's only took a couple of months for him to come in and be able to do that. I'm not saying Clermont didn't come in at the start and get results either, but we're unbeaten for a long time. But pick, pick what two games out of that run when he came in till till the end of the year last year where you thought right we're playing some some of the best football I've seen at Rangers we haven't really done that at all one that springs to mind is Hearts at home where we won five now and um, obviously the Ross County game this season was a was a highlight but well, we don't play good football we're not good to watch Clement doesn't make the right decisions with his team selection all the time he proves he's weak. Time and time again, we start in Tavernier when he's clearly like it shouldn't be starting games anymore for Rangers. It should be Dujon Sterling getting his opportunity in there. It should be Cass and Weirho getting a chance at right back. Why is it we're persisting with this guy? Serial Dessers as well, up there doing sh- like absolutely nothing for like four games now in a row. And he's sitting s- smashing up the bench in that yesterday, g- losing his head because he's getting subbed. There was. Obviously, we'll go on to the St. Johnson game in a minute, but there's, a, there's chances that he's more likely to score than anything and still manages to put it by the post or hit it straight to the goalkeeper. He's just so bad at football. <laughs> I, mean, I, I have no <clears throat> thingy for that, as I say. Yeah. Aye, mate. I just... I, I don't know what to say, mate. As I say, Stalin should be in there. We know all the, but the manager won't do it. Um and even the young boys, you say, throw the young boy on, give him a chance. Give him a chance. Obviously, last game, we seen him, there was real no service to him, so he couldn't really get effect in the game. But, I mean, the chances, even last night with Dessers with a header, I mean, come on. They're, they're, they're to me, as you say, you've got to score him. Your forward's got to put him in. Like your bread and butter, you've got to score him. Um, and, I mean, it's just at the moment in time, there's no real real hope, I feel, at the club. Um way we play is just so unattractive. There's no enjoyment of watching my team play football. And I there's no there's one or two as I say player wise that I like. Well I mean yeah FD is about one of the only ones obviously the Albanian boy as well where you're you are you are excited to watch them when they get the ball you're excited to see what they do with it. And obviously Baron as well has been fantastic so far. Um I agreed we also gave him maybe a wee break last night or what have you. Um but I as I say you just can't rely on Con- Connor Barn in the middle of the park to to be the guy, he needs he needs help there. Do you know what I mean? Dio Mandy's been two. Dio Mandy's been the biggest letdown of this season. By uh, the way, he's been shy. <laughs> he has he's been, been god awful. Um, I just as to say, Midland the Park is a is a, a worrying area for us. No, yeah, no, it definitely is. And again, that was kind of brought to attention last night. Um, obviously, a late kick off time. You weren't expecting not to be a massive. <laughs> Uh, yeah, Rowdy the Ibrox crowd, but we had to get the victory. It was obviously imperative. You keep winning in the league. Um, St Johnston obviously got a new manager coming in um, as well. It was at the game last night, so they're going to be obviously full of confidence, trying to impress him. And the man on your screen there, Kempioka, gave us gave us some problems um, running running in behind, and um, maybe if he had a bit kind of smarter of a football brain, they could have caused us a lot more problems um, in terms of goals last night, but. It was a really, really turgid display for Rangers again. Obviously, I can understand coming back off Europe Thursday, Sunday. It's going to take time to be able to adapt to that, and especially when you don't rotate the team, really. Um, then there's going to be problems, I think. If we go through the team, obviously, I know you didn't see the game live as well, so we'll we'll go through um, what, obviously, you have saw. Aye, Butland, I'll um, oh, be going to say something there. Oh, no, on you go, on you go, mate, on you go. Um, no, right, so I Butland... Um, Made a couple of decent saves. Uh, as I say, St. Johnson kind of came into the game a bit in the second half 
after we went um two and all up with a couple of decent opportunities, but Butland was was there, he was fine in corners and stuff. Um he was commanding, so I no issues with we, we Butland again. Tavenier probably a bit better than we've saw him recently. He got moved to right wing um in the second half. Again, we've got three right backs in the pitch at one point though, which is just really highly concerning. Um but Tavenier he was a lot better. Still I I still need them to be changed. I still need a rotation in that area. Again, the same story every time we, we speak of them. I kind of just done with him. Um two centre halves. I thought John Sewer was solid again. Kind of similar to what we were saying. Really, really solid in the league. But when it comes to these high level European opponents, Sutter um normally struggles. Just can't handle it, mate. And it's I feel for him a bit with it, but as I say, he's he's good enough for the league. It's just European wise, bigger games. I just don't, I don't fancy him. I don't back him at all. Aye, I think I'm kind of in the summer department. We should have two better centre halves, regardless for for European competition. But so, I he's he's totally fine in the league. I don't think he he uses his strength really well. He's got a good uh, kind of stature about him. Um, obviously, he can play with the ball. He's got a bit of pace to catch up with with the Sidibis and Kempiokas last night for St Johnston. So he done well, recovered um, really well for some of their counter attacks and stuff. So. I no issues with Sutter. Robin Proper, he was kind of solid again, but there was one moment where he was really, really lucky. He got through to the ground, uh, misjudged uh, the tackle going in for the ball. It was a one-on-one for St Johnston and it ended up a really good save for, for Jack Butlin. So I think one of the main things for me that I'm seeing with Robin Proper is he's just really, really weak. He's also slower than a week in jail as well. So that doesn't help against a team that are obviously looking to counter on you, but... I think for the, the whole eight, you can't be too critical on Robin Proper last night, apart for that one one issue where that kind of feeds into my head a wee bit, thinking, right, is this guy going to be good enough to play and be physical enough against these what, Aberdeen and Kilmarnock that are coming up next? So, that's the thing. I just think with Proper, I just get a lander vibes, mate. I think he can be, it seems like he can be decent one game and then the next game he'll just be all over the place. I used to call him Bambi on ice, maybe. This is Bambi on Ice Part 2 here with Robin Proper. Uh, no, if I, I I definitely see the comparison. Seems to be more of a ball playing centre-half, but definitely needs to improve on his, his strength in the games against these kind I just of... Didn't, I couldn't believe the amount of time he was thinking he was going to get on the ball on Thursday and all. I was... Yeah. just couldn't believe that, mate. But as I say, he gives me a lot of vibes. Aye. Uh, um, and then you have to at left back again another, another really really good showing I think he's the kind of shining light out of all these games that we've played so far this season he's really really positive he's he's defensively really good as well I think even on Thursday he didn't really do too bad either I think he get found out defensively sometimes we, you've got Ryan Cherky again she's he's a really really tricky player to play against but I think you have to He'll learn for that and he'll be a player that will hopefully um, aye, make us a bit of money in the future. But aye, I'm enjoying seeing him play. No, absolutely, mate. And as I say, I just I think you push him forward a wee bit for me. I don't really fancy him <clears throat> as a left back. I, I think he could, he's so attacking, mate. You could. Yeah, you could. Especially when we've got no wingers that are doing anything, exactly. really. And you've got the Dutch boy uh, on the bench. I feel like just throw him there. Pat him forward a wee bit um, and gives us a lot. I, I really like him, as you say, as well. Um, and hopefully he does make us some dough down the line. Nah, no, I really like him. I think he's been definitely one of the standouts. See, even when we're playing poor, I think he's always wanting the ball and always trying to look forward. So I, I've, I've been impressed. We, we have more players with that kind of mindset. It would be great. Um, Dio Mandy, again, absolutely. He was just so poor. Um I don't I don't know what it is. I don't I really don't know what it is. We we only obviously played really well away at Malmo. But apart from that, like he just looks completely lost out there. He looked for the player that we signed that just slotted perfectly in the team last season to now where you're like, right, we paid four and a half million for this guy that can't do the basics of the game right. There's been a, a massive drop off on him and again that's where I kinda I'm getting concerned with Clement's management of these players. How are they getting worse <laughs> while they're here? Like he's, he's still here. I know. Well, you know, maybe it's confidence. Maybe just it's confidence with Dio Mandy. But as you say, struggling to do the basic of the game and you paid that kind of money it is really, really concerning. No, I think I last night didn't really come off for him at all. Obviously, get subbed off in the the first half. But his partner yesterday, Raskin, was was fantastic. He was he kept the midfield ticking. He kept. Um, 
Aye, he picked out some good passes. Obviously, towards the end of the game, he became a bit kind of lacklustre with his, uh, his decision-making, but I thought Raskin slotted in really nicely. He's given us another option in there. I prefer having Raskin in the team anyway. <laughs> um, I think you definitely see the difference for having him there. But, um, aye, I've got, I've got no issues with, with Nico Raskin. Just, you want to see him get more of a chance now. feel sorry for the guy having to sit on the bench. Well, that's been my whole thing. Why was Clement no picking him? I just thought... I think he's a, he's a decent enough player, as I say, to start the, the game, especially when you've seen some of the performances for Dio Mandy, what have you. Um, it'd be nice to see Nico get a, a good run in the team. Um, but aye, hopefully, hopefully picks up and he, he starts to get a good run, mate. Aye, no, I, I'm definitely excited to see more of him in the team. Starting the left-hand side, McCausland, he's just not going to do for the start of the game. He's He is... He's in fine fact, if you're going to bring him on like we did in Malmo where he can shoot up the game a wee bit. He can give you that outlet. But he he really should have went out and loaned this summer. Um, he's fine as a squad player for us, aye, but we we desperately need wingers in. I can't believe we're already saying this and the, the transfer window only shut like two months ago. We need wingers already. Matondo is nowhere to be seen since the Celtic game. Cortez is confirmed to be out injured for a longer period than than was expected. You've obviously got Yilmaz coming back into training. Danilo, which is fine, beef up the bench and beef up the squad a bit more with the guys, but the wide areas of the pitch are like diabolical. We're having to play by Rami out in the left-hand side, and he's done well. He, he's an option out there, but for me, the way this team has to play, we need wingers with pace. Like, that's why Matondo succeeds for Clement, because he's got raw pace that he can just run. McCausland doesn't get any of that. Well, you just I just go back to that the deal obviously the deal with the boy for Southampton. Why did we pull out of that? We just play, becomes play baffling. It just as you say, baffling, mate. I it just shows you the failure again for the board to identify the the right areas. But as you say, I agree. McCausland probably should have gone out on loan. We should have better uh, quality in there. But for me, he's definitely more of a bring him on second half impact kind of player than than starting. He really doesn't offer anything when he starts a game. Of, yeah, my football does McCausland, but that one I'll go back to that with the boy for Southampton. Why did we pull out that deal? No, because now we're lo the only logical explanation for that is because Matondo came on to a bit of form in the last game and they thought, right, we'll go with Matondo, and then he gets injured. <laughs> like, that's just the Rangers' way of doing things. It's, it's there's no luck. luck. Aye, just, that is just, just the way it is. Um, I think I. in time that will be a baffling decision not to bring in another winger, especially when he was there. Apparently, advanced talks. All it needed to be done is sign the like paper. Seems like he he wanted to come to us more than he did want to go to Belgium. Um, so I, I think he would have been perfect in this team perfect. as well. When you look at how we are, we need somebody that's actually get quality, actually get a bit of skill to get by somebody. Aye, concerning that we we pulled out of that one. But McCausland for me, he obviously came on to games and he's he's been good. But it's when he starts games for me, you really see his inexperience and you really see he's not at the level that we need to... to obviously, we, we're looking to be getting games done within the first, first 45 minutes. He's not going to be good enough for that. Um, Bayrami had a quite a quieter night last night. Again, you, you can kind of see his level is a lot more and people need to be on his wavelength, um, which I don't really see too many um, occupying at that level. But I think uh, he's obviously still relatively new in the building. He only played his first game after the first international break, so it's good to obviously he'll be going off with, with Albania again. We'll see how he does over there. But uh, he's going to be an important player for us this season if we are to get any success, really. Absolutely, mate. And uh, hopefully doesn't he get injured, um, but knowing our luck. Um... Nah, he'll come back, back with his two legs broken or something, no nah. doubt. <laughs> um, and then it was a big night for Vaslav Czerny. Obviously, one is the game, two really nice goals. Uh, the first one, it's just what you would expect from him. He, he tries to take it by him on his left foot. Obviously comes off for him uh, really nice. And I think what we expected to see if he was in this game, was just more yeah. doing the basic stuff, passing the ball on instead of trying to pass out the park, just being simple with his play, obviously taking his chances when they came. It was, it was obviously a big night for Czerny. And the thing is, I'm not the biggest fan of the guy, but... If he's going to be what we're, what we're going for until January, we just need to get behind him and hopefully he can keep scoring from now on. But it's been a, a bad, bad spell for him since he's he's came into the club. Two big goals, obviously, to win as the game last night. You would hope that's hopefully a sign of things to come. But I, I don't think we can hold our breath too much <laughs> based, based on what we've seen. But 
Aye, it'd be nice if we can get somebody out there that can that can score his goals and and a team that's really lacking any any goals anywhere. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, no, for him mentally, it's big obviously getting the two goals and two fantastic goals. Uh, lovely assist for you. my boy Yanis coming back into the fold. Um, but I don't know, just a part of me thinks maybe, maybe that's his level, do you know what I mean? Kind of situation. I'm just still not convinced with a boy. And no, it'll, def it'll take a lot more than two goals against St. Johnson. Uh, still, I mean, a massive game against Leon. That's what you're expecting Rangers plus to step up and turn up. Well, look, look at that. Anyway. If he scores against Leon, scores the one against Malmo. You're looking at he's got, five uh, goals he scored already, and you're going to be more positive about the guy that he's at that level where he can score you goals. But uh, he's got a long way to go uh, this season. It's going to be a interesting international break for him. I'm not sure if he's away with Czech Republic or not, but um, aye, uh, hopefully he can kind of keep continuing just being that outlet for us and uh, scoring goals when he comes back. And then I, uh, you're looking at your number nine, just just dire just complete dire just uh, what Adessa's game involves is a cross gets into the box he is saying oh my shirt was pulled instead he actually try to go for the ball he head on the score for us throwed himself to the ground to try and get a penalty running about doing nothing chasing men can he muscle any centre half in the league off the ball can he win a header even when he does win a header a free header in the box a corner he doesn't have any quality direct into the goal. We we didn't get, take the offer for Atlanta and MLS. I know obviously he rejected it as well because he wanted to stay and that's whatever, but you should have been pushing him out the door at that point. That's what we've went with. We, Cyril Dessers <laughs> is our main number nine until January. I mean, you, as you say, you're trying back it, you're trying point out areas and maybe where he's positive and what have you, but... Um... Ah, it should have been been pushed on the flight. Should have been should have been pushed just, on it. Just diabolical. Uh, Obviously, what I was speaking about just before we went on to this game, Cherney found him really nicely, I think. And all he has to do is take a touch and shoot. Score. But oh, he yeah. takes a touch and he ends up back healing the ball behind him. Like, how how does that happen? Like no oh, quality no, forward that has played for Rangers has ever I done do. that. I'd honestly say Eduardo Herrera was better than him. Yeah, uh, I <laughs> like, just as a football player, like he's so bad. <laughs> I just I go to the obviously the the, the massive chance with a header last night. I just think any real Rangers forward with a with a buried that even when you go to the, the one obviously as well. Um, at the weekend there we done here whatever you like. Obviously you can say a great save and what have you, but just think any real any chances he really gets properly a real Rangers forward with a buried and finished. Um. As I say, you can't fault his hard work. His hard work, sorry, but he is shouldn't be. As I say, no. I was already keeping Dessers as long as we brought somebody better in. As Dessers was the number two, I wasn't bothered. He, he had decent numbers and what have you, but the um, fact that we didn't bring another forward in, and yet again, as you say, going into January, you think to yourself right, we need a forward and we need we need two wingers. You'd probably say you need another midfielder as well in there, maybe another centre half. But again. It's just Again, that. we're we're giving ourselves a lot of work to do in January, where it's really hard to buy players. It's really hard to get players in. I think we can only have a certain amount of loan deals as well in the squad. So there's that. It's going to be a a difficult period again for when we go into that window. But that's obviously a long time away. Who came back and obviously made his return to the squad was Yanis Hadji to a really really rapturous Ibrox reception at halftime, um, which is deserved because I feel like he's kind of just been lost in the shuffle a wee bit and I don't think that's fair considering on how, how good a player he's been for the club at times but it was obviously an assist for Cherney which was good and then I obviously get sent off on his his return obviously went to VAR he did have him quite high and quite hard on the, the kind of shin ankle area but I don't have any complaints over him getting sent off but um, it's obviously nice to see him back and uh, as an option Aye, that's uh, just as a, as an option. You think about how some people during the summer behaved and stuff like that compared to the way Yanis was. He he was clearly wanted to play for the club, and even when he was in the B team or training on his own, you could tell the attitude was a professional attitude. Um, no complaints about the red card whatsoever. But him, for him, it's massive. Obviously, just to get that assist, being back at Ibrox as well. Um, and as I say, he probably looked at the fixture list and he meant, "Kelly away. I'm no, I'm not playing on that part." 
Nah, well, I think I don't know if it's a one or two game ban, but um, he'll obviously be back as a as an option for us after that. I think we have not been in the Europa League squad as well. He's a he's the guy that probably should be starting a lot of your league games. Absolutely. Take a bit of, a bit of the pressure off by Rami and and Tom Lawrence and and give Hadji a game in the league would be the the right thing to do. I think, but obviously we go into this international break now. There's a couple of weeks, obviously, until that Kilmarnock game. Hopefully, hopefully players come back for for injuries. We said, but I it's, it's definitely a time for Kilmarnock to do a bit of reflection because this next period could literally spell the end of his time at Rangers if it doesn't go right. Um, we've got massive games coming up, as you say, Aberdeen away, Kelly away, St Mirren at home. We've got Stoya Bucharest and uh, Olympiacos in the Europa League. So. Aye, we, we need to massive. improve um, and it's a massive, massive period again for him at the club. We've done all right in this spell for the last international break to now. Only the Leon games, the the glaring problem, but as much as we're winning games, we're still not playing well and better teams like Leon are going to pick us apart and aye, there needs to be a massive, massive improvement in terms of, in terms of that, but aye, that's all for me today, really. Ah, uh, well, I'll just echo that, mate. As I say, I just... I'm all right with grinding results out, might have you, but I need to see something on the park as well. Um, and as you say, hopefully a bit of reflection for Clermont and and the players as well. You can obviously Clermont, we can say what we can say about Clermont, but as well, so I think some of the players need to look at themselves and demand more of themselves. As you say, you look at Dio Mandy, I look at maybe Boy on the Screen as well there, I look at a lot of them should be looking at themselves and be going, right, no, I need to kick the levels up here, just the basics of the game. I need to do them. If you just do the basics right, everything else will tick. Um, and it's a massive spell, as you say, for the manager. And I would also, as I say, these players as well. Um, aye. He's, he'll, he'll be the one that feels the brunt of whatever happens. But um, aye, it's just kick on. Let's hope we kick on, obviously. Can uh, enjoy a wee spell without Rangers. Um, no, no, that's the thing. It takes a lot out of you that you're actually happy when the international break rolls around now. So, a uh, couple of weeks, obviously, break, and then we'll be back at it after the, the Kelly game, covering that and whatever's to, to come. So, uh, it's, it's going to be a busy, busy period, but a period there where we need to improve in every department. So, uh, if you'd like, subscribe and share. We'll be back in a couple of weeks uh, after that commandment game. So, we'll see you then.